have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Just like the Gentiles and the heathens are under a strong delusion in the end times, the Israelites are not exempt from suffering from the same strong delusion. As long as the people of the Most High follow after the Gentiles and their gods, they will be partakers in the judgment upon the Gentiles and their nations. Throughout the scriptures, the Most High, the Father, warned the Israelites to learn not the ways of the heathens. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The Israelites spent majority of their lives in captivity in every generation. The Israelites are in captivity because they allow the abominations of the heathens to influence them to forsake their God. When the sin of idolatry is spoken of in this generation, many Israelites seems to believe the sin of idolatry only affected our ancestors. Some Israelites put all the blame on our ancestors for being in the land of our captivity. Some Israelites can't seem to comprehend that we're still in captivity because this generation continue in the sins of our ancestors. As soon as Israelites everywhere repent wholeheartedly and return to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, you will see how fast the Father will send the word of God to deliver his people. Instead of repentance, Israelites are arguing and debating about doctrines. The sin of idolatry have always been the number one problem in the Israelite nation. The sin of idolatry continue to destroy many Israelites in this generation. The Israelites in the awakening is not exempt from the sin of idolatry. A great majority of Israelites believe because the awakening is happening, every Israelite that was awakened served the God of Israel. That is false. The scriptures prophesy against this generation and said they would serve gods their ancestors have not known in the land of their captivity. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. The Gentiles and Israelites in and out of the awakening serve the God of this world. The Israelites that are bondmen and bondwomen in the pagan church worship Jesus. The Israelites that are in the other awakening worship Yahshua. None of them worship the God of Israel, the Father. Many Israelites have been deceived into believing they worship the God of Israel when they worship the Messiah. The practice of worshiping the Messiah as the God of Israel is a pagan practice that stems from the mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church. Prior to religion, our righteous ancestors served the God of Israel, the Father. They never worshiped the Messiah as the God of Israel. The Messiah communicated with our ancestors as the angel of the Lord before he became flesh. Our ancestors reverenced him and held the angel of the Lord in high esteem, but our ancestors knew that the Most High, the Father, was their God. The Most High, the Father, is the King of Israel. He alone is the Holy One of Israel. The Messiah is a prince set to deliver us at the appointed time, as well as to protect and help us serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. For 
I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. You heard the scriptures for yourself. The scripture revealed that the Most High, the Father, is the King of Israel. The scripture went on to say that besides him, there's no one else. Despite the scripture saying this loud and clear, if Israelites would let the scripture speak, the sin of idolatry would cease from among the Israelites in this generation. Instead of letting the scripture speak, many Israelites relate to the doctrines from Rome. The indoctrination from the pagan church have blind the mind and heart of many to find some sort of loophole that gives them permission to worship the Messiah as the father. As long as Israelites believe the Messiah is the father in the flesh, the Satans will continue to deceive them to serve the God of this world. Levi, the progenitor of the Levite tribe, had the blessing to be taken into the heavens. Levi interacted with the angel who opened the gates to him. There's only one angel that had the keys to open the gates in heaven. This angel also had the keys to the kingdom. Just as the New Testament said, the Messiah had the keys to the kingdom. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and upon a throne of glory the Most High. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identified as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander-in-chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. He holds a cosmically sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. The reason some Israelites can't seem to connect the dots, the delusion that was put on them to believe a lie is very strong upon them. As well as the spirit of pride won't let some Israelites admit that the one they thought was the Messiah is not. The gospel of truth is exposing the lies. Yet some Israelites believe the workers of iniquity that gave them the Trinity and God in the flesh doctrine didn't lie. They lied about everything else, but not the God in the flesh and Trinity doctrine. Israelites, it's time to bind the spirit of pride and take the opportunity the Father is giving you to repent to return to him. As long as you keep rejecting the truth, the Most High will make you believe a lie through the strong delusion. Levi, who was taken into the heavens, asked the angel his name, just like Manoah asked the angel of the Lord and didn't get an answer. Jacob also asked and he didn't get a response. Likewise, Levi asked the angel who assisted him his name and the angel didn't give him his name. The angel said to Levi that he was the angel that intercede for the Israelites and all the righteous. This angel shares the same responsibility with the Messiah. When Levi heard all of this, he didn't worship the angel. Levi blessed the Most High, the Father, and the angel who intercedes on our behalf. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly, for every evil spirit attacketh. And after these things, I awake and bless the Most High and the angel who intercedeth for the nation of Israel and for all the righteous. Israelites, we have to learn to differentiate the Father from his creatures he used to help us. Almost every prophet and person the Most High used to help his people, the Israelites are quick to give the glory of the Father to that person. Israelites, the time have come for you to know that the Most High will save his people through many saviors. Just because the Most High used his creatures to save us, it doesn't mean we have to worship the creatures as gods. I can't imagine how many Israelites worship Putin and put him on a pedestal in their heart. Just because the Most High used him, it doesn't mean you give the glory of the Father to him. Just because the Most High used the Word of God to save us, it doesn't mean we should give the glory of the Father to the Messiah. The Most High said he will not share his glory with anyone. I am the Lord, that is my name, 
and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Despite the scriptures making it very clear that we should worship and serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, there are some Israelites who can't comprehend this simple command from the Father. They will worship the created creatures more than the Father. Israelites, stop allowing the workers of iniquity to turn the truth of the Most High's words into a lie. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Jacob, Manoah, and Levi knew the angel was not the Most High the Father. That is why they asked him his name. If the angel was the father, they would have already known his name. Levi's response to the angel was with blessings. None of the men mentioned worship the angel of the Lord when he came to speak with them. Israelites, don't mistake reverence for worship. The workers of iniquity did an excellent job of altering the scriptures. In certain scriptures where it stated our ancestors worship, it should have said reverence. Our ancestors bow to the angel of the Lord. I see people bowing to show respect all the time. The scripture said every knee will bow. Israelites, it's important for you to know that the angels took on the likeness and appearance of a man to speak with our ancestors. The angels are always transforming themselves to appear human. The scripture said to us to be careful how we treat strangers. We may entertain angels unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. To our ancestors, the messengers that came to them with a message from the Father were men of God. They showed their respect, just like some of you respect your pastors or anyone whom you believe the Most High is using to help you. Our ancestors did the same thing. They were grateful to hear from the Father through the man or woman of God he used to give them a message. Showing appreciation to the messengers doesn't make them the father in the flesh, nor does it give us permission to worship the angels and the people the Most High used to help us. On multiple occasions, the angels said to our ancestors not to worship them. They went on to say they were servants like you and me. The book of Revelation talk about an angel that had the everlasting gospel to preach to the inhabitants of the earth. The angel said to fear the father and give him glory. The angel said to worship the one who created the heavens and earth. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. The gospel of truth that is spreading across the world is happening through the angel that have the everlasting gospel to preach to all nations. In the flesh, you see individuals teaching truth on social media, spreading the truth throughout the world. Behind the scenes, the angels are spreading the gospel of truth to all the kingdoms of this world. Israelites, don't let the Satans close your spiritual eyes. The Satans are deceiving a great majority of Israelites through the Trinity and God in the flesh doctrine. Majority of the world believe in the Trinity and God in the flesh doctrine. What did the scripture said about the road that leads to destruction? The scripture said broad is the way that leads to destruction, correct? I'm estimating over 80% of this world believe Jesus or Yeshua is the father in the flesh. I will ask you Israelites, the belief in the Trinity doctrine, is that the narrow road or the broad road? What did the scripture say? Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The scripture said, we would serve idols in the land of our captivity. What did you believe the scriptures meant when it said we would serve other gods in the land of our captivity? Israelites, if you want to get it right with the father, denounce the idols of your father and mother's house. Repent of your sins and serve the father in the spirit and in truth. The Messiah will show you how to serve the father in the spirit and in truth. The God you were serving in religion is not the God of Israel. 
The God many Israelites worship and serve in the other awakening is not the God of Israel. Many of you worship Yahshua, the black version of Jesus. If you were true followers of the Messiah, you would listen to him when he said to you that the father sent him and to worship the father. On multiple occasions, the Messiah said for you to follow him, not to worship him. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. The Messiah on many occasions said to his disciples to follow him. The Messiah said to Peter and his brother when they were fishing to cast down their nets and follow him. He would teach them how to be fishers of men. The Messiah didn't say to Peter and his brother, I am God, follow me, and I will show you how to worship me in the spirit and in truth. The Messiah taught his disciples the truth for his disciples to teach the Gentiles about the God of Israel. The Most High did not intend to have the whole world worshiping the Messiah as God the Father in the flesh. The Most High cast out the nations for their abominations and idolatries. The Israelites follow in the footsteps of the heathens and serve other gods. The Israelites have a history throughout the scriptures of them worshiping other gods. The Messiah became flesh for multiple reasons. One of those reasons, to teach the Israelites how to serve the Father. That is why the Messiah said to follow him. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. On social media, some people only follow the people they know, while some of you follow people you're inspired by and like their content. Following a person on social media doesn't mean you must worship them or transform the person into your God. The Israelites were supposed to follow the Messiah back to the Father. The heathens used the likeness of the Messiah to exalt their God in religion. Everyone the Father gave to the Messiah, they all will come to the Messiah. Majority of Israelites and Gentiles didn't come to the Messiah at their own free will. The fear of them not obtaining salvation made many people accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The Most High, the Father, didn't draw majority of people to the Messiah. How can the Father draw you to the Messiah if you don't know him, nor do you acknowledge him? You give the glory of the Father to another. Most Israelites and Gentiles met Jesus or Yahshua in religion. The Most High is not the founder of religion. Most Israelites and Gentiles didn't come to the Messiah on their own accord. A worker of iniquity in the church led them to Jesus, who is the God of this world. The Messiah in the scripture said, the father will draw you to him. The Messiah also said, everyone the father gave to him, they will come to him. Most of you were led to the false Messiah that came in his own name through pressure from religion. Tell the truth and shame the devil. All that the father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. The Messiah clearly said in the scriptures that he came down from heaven, not to do his own will, but the will of the Father who sent him. I don't know how else can the scriptures express that the Messiah was sent by the Father to do the will of the Father. Israelites, the time have come for you to start differentiating the Father from the Son. If the Messiah is not here to do his own will, and many Israelites believe he's God in the flesh, whose will is he doing then? The time have come for you to believe the scriptures and not doctrine. The gospel of truth is exposing the secrets. Listen to your God. The word of the Most High will sanctify you with truth, for the word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctification doesn't come through doctrines, but through truth. The sin of idolatry is the biggest downfall to the Israelites. As long as Israelites continue to reject the God of their fathers, they will never comprehend the scriptures and the world they live in. The Israelites have been rejecting the God of Israel from the very beginning. This generation is no different. They continue in the sins of their fathers. Because of their unbelief of the truth of the scriptures, the strong delusion sent by the Most High, the Father, was sent upon all who reject the truth. 
That is why many in this generation and previous generations worship the God of this world. They can't differentiate the God of Israel from the God of this world. Nowhere can you read in the Bible of the Messiah saying he's God the Father in the flesh. Because the explanation of the Messiah being God in the flesh make perfect sense to the carnal mind, most Israelites will reject and ignore what the scriptures say to accept the wisdom and interpretation of this world. Most Israelites don't understand that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to the Most High. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. The gospel of truth that is taking over the world is not only about identifying the true Israelites and the race of the Messiah. The truth is exposing everything that was hidden and kept secret. That is including the doctrines the heathens indoctrinated the entire world with. The Gentiles that were deceived are waking up to the fact that they inherited lies. If the Gentiles inherited lies, what do you think you inherited following the heathens while you were sleeping? The delusion spoken of in the book of Thessalonians is not only on the Gentiles, but on the Israelites who reject the truth. The Most High is not only sending a strong delusion on all who reject the truth. The Most High said he would give some people over to a reprobate mind. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. To the Israelites and Gentiles who believe because we're in the end times, many would repent. That is not the case. The strong delusion and along with the reprobate mind will cause many to rebel against the Most High to follow the God of this world. That is why the scripture said the end times are perilous times. Despite the gospel of truth being heard in all the nations, it will harden the hearts of many, especially the people who refuse to believe the truth. I'm not sure how can some Israelites return to the Father if they are rejecting the truth. The scripture said in the book of John that the father wants his people to serve and worship him in the spirit and in truth. You can't escape the truth that is spreading in all the kingdoms of this world. Many Israelites in the other awakening don't believe they need to return to the father because they've been deceived into believing they serve the father in religion. If you were serving the father, the most high wouldn't be pleading with his people to return to him. Even from the days of your fathers, Ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? The strong delusion along with the reprobate mind will cause some Israelites to do what is not convenient. Many Israelites are only focusing on the signs of the times that point to the end of the Gentile rule, as well as the signs of times they can see manifesting with the eyes of the flesh. When the eclipse happened, a great majority of Israelites were on it. To them, the eclipse is the sign that signified the times of the Gentiles have come to an end. The Israelites want to see the Most High's judgment upon the nations. They want the Father to recompense the Gentiles for all of their troubles. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Some Israelites can't seem to understand that a great majority of your troubles are self-inflicted. Your sins cause you to be a bondman and bondwomen in the land of your captivity. Your unbelief caused many of you to be rejected by the Most High. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. The Most High have done these things to his people because of the multitude of sins in our nation. As a nation, we are in no position to judge the Gentiles for their wickedness when our nation's wickedness is as diabolical as the Gentiles. The Most High promised to redeem his people, all of his people that does his will. Some Israelites can't wait for redemption. While they are anxious to be redeemed, they are ignoring the Father in the process. Some Israelites don't realize that a large population of Israelites are still deceived in and out of the awakening. The Satans continue to deceive Israelites with the doctrines from Rome. The Israelites that uphold the doctrines of Rome believe they've made it to the coming kingdom. 
The Most High have expectations for the end time generations. While some Israelites are worried about the affairs of the Gentiles, they can't see the prophecies spoken about them in the end times. The end time prophecies about our nation is not only about our redemption. If Israelites would work out their own salvation, two thirds of our people wouldn't perish. The road that leads to life would be overpopulated with Israelites inheriting the coming kingdom. Because there's only a remnant, a few Israelites will truly repent and return to the Father. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Despite the scriptures letting us know only a remnant will return to serve the Father, you would think Israelites everywhere would be humbling themselves and seeking the face of the Father. Instead of humbling themselves to get to know the Most High, they are more proud now than ever. You can't say anything to some Israelites. As the signs of the times are making themselves known, I can see how the testaments of the 12 patriarchs are being fulfilled. To the Israelites who have read the testaments and not discard them, the prophecies told by our fathers are coming to pass. Because some Israelites are blind and the affairs of this world consume them, they can't see the prophecies about our nations coming to pass. Some Israelites believe they have done all the necessary work to inherit the kingdom. The Most High command his people to humble themselves for a reason. If Israelites were truly seeking the Father, they would see the urgency in repenting. Judah said his tribe would practice idolatry and follow those with a familiar spirit. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries, which ye shall practice against the kingdom, following them that have familiar spirits, diviners and demons of error. Ye shall make your daughters singing girls and harlots, and ye shall mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. You can read throughout the scriptures of the Israelites serving other gods in the land of their captivity. The entire 12 tribes is guilty when it comes to the sin of idolatry. Judah prophesied that his tribe would practice witchcraft and idolatry. Remember I said to you on multiple occasions that religion is nothing but witchcraft and idolatry. Judah said his tribe would mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. Did you hear that Israelites? the tribe of Judah would mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. These prophecies are coming to pass. The Israelites have mingled themselves very well with Rome. That is why they cannot come out of her. That is why the Satans continue to have a strong hold on their lives. Majority of Israelites in the diaspora identify with the tribe of Judah. Judah prophesied that his tribe would do these things. Today, those prophecies are being fulfilled. So many Israelites in the awakening can't see the scriptures being fulfilled. The strong delusion upon them and the reprobate mind blurred their vision. The God of this world, whom many Israelites serve, have blind their minds. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Many Israelites in the other awakening is focused on the signs of the times on the other nations. They cannot see certain prophecies being fulfilled because their spiritual eyes are closed. With the strong delusion on some Israelites, they cannot perceive what is spiritual. With the exposure of Sean Combs, the prophecy about the men of Judah making their daughters singing girls and harlots is happening right now in the celebrity culture. The truth that is coming out about Sean Combs exposes the dark side of the music industry. The Daughters of Zion are made to be great icons in public. Behind closed doors, some are forced into prostitution. How many sexual assault cases have we heard about this year alone? Hard truth such as this is too difficult for some Israelites to digest. Instead of believing the truth to make the necessary changes, many Israelites would deny and reject the truth to comfort their egos. Judah prophesied that the love of money, idolatry, and women will be the downfall to his tribe. And now I command you, my children, not to love money, nor to gaze upon the beauty of women, because for the sake of money and beauty, I was led astray to Bathsheba the Canaanite. 
For I know that because of these two things shall my race fall into wickedness. Not only will the love of money be the downfall to the tribe of Judah, Judah said that the love of money will lead to idolatry. Whenever I speak about the idolatry in this generation and in the awakening, many Israelites don't seem to understand that the sin of idolatry is the downfall of many Israelites in the awakening and outside of the awakening. My prayer is that the father will open the eyes of his people to see the great sin of idolatry is destroying his people in this generation. We don't have to go back to our ancestors to find the sin of idolatry. The sin of idolatry is present in this generation in the awakening. The strong delusion have many Israelites in denial. My children, the love of money leads to idolatry. Because when led astray through money, men name as gods those who are not gods, and it caused him who hath it to fall into madness. For the sake of money I lost my children, and had not my repentance and my humiliation and the prayers of my father been accepted, I should have died childless. But the God of my fathers had mercy on me, because I did it in ignorance. Judah himself was judged. Do you believe your example? Instead of repenting, Israelites are debating. The prophecies recorded in the Testament of Levi are also coming to pass at this time. Levi prophesied that his children would do some abominable things. The temple of the Most High was destroyed because of the uncleanness of the Levites. The abominable things they did in the temple caused the Most High to send the Levites into captivity. The destruction of the temple happened in 70 AD when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. The Romans destroyed the temple of the Most High. Today, the Roman Catholic Church is the largest religious faith in the world. Their faith is based on the God of Israel. A great majority of Israelites are members of that religion, even the Israelites that proclaim to have left the church. If the Romans truly served the God of Israel, why would they destroy the temple of the Most High? Therefore, the temple which the Lord shall choose shall be laid waste through your uncleanness, and you shall be captives throughout all nations. Only the truth shall make you free. Levi prophesied that his children would persecute the righteous Israelites that stand in the truth and speak the word of the Most High in sincerity. I can't tell you how many times in the other awakening I've heard about Israelites trashing another Israelite. There are countless exposed videos done by Israelites on another Israelite that are full of slander. The exposing of the individual is not based on truth. Some Israelites will gather together to tear down another Israelite they don't agree with. I've heard some stories about diabolical things done in the so-called awakening. The Israelites who participate in the slander culture believe they are doing the will of the Most High. The delusion on some Israelites are very real. And ye shall persecute righteous men and hate the godly. The words of the faithful shall ye abhor. And a man who renew the law in the power of the Most High, ye shall call a deceiver, and at last ye shall rush upon him to slay him, not knowing his dignity, taking innocent blood through wickedness upon your heads. All of what Levi prophesied to his children are coming to pass. Levi had to repent for the sins of his tribe. Levi didn't want to be held accountable for the abominations his tribe would commit against the kingdom. In the mix of all the wickedness in the world, some Israelites will continue to be wicked. Despite the awakening in the gospel of the kingdom is being heard in all the nations of this world, some Israelites will not repent. That is why we're in no position to allow ourselves to believe because we're the chosen people, we're safe. The heart and mind of some Israelites belong to the Satans. And behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgressions, which you shall commit in the end of the ages against the Savior of the world, Christ, acting godlessly, deceiving Israel, and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. And ye shall deal lawlessly together with Israel, so he shall not bear with Jerusalem because of your wickedness, but the veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. If you're looking to increase your knowledge about the tribes, read the Testaments of the 12 Patriarchs. I reviewed all 12 Testaments on this channel a little over a year ago. 
By reading the Testaments, you will see the iniquities done by our ancestors, as well as this generation that caused the Most High to scatter his people into all the kingdoms of this world. The Israelite nation is not guiltless. Due to our nation's iniquities, the Most High rejected the entire 12 tribes. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Dan prophesied that his tribe would make Satan their prince. Benjamin said his tribe would fall into the sin of Sodom, chasing strange flesh. All of these prophecies spoken by our fathers is happening right now. Some Israelites want the Most High to redeem them right now. Israelites, you're not ready. If the Father send the Messiah today, some Israelites would be in for a rude awakening. Israelites, it's very important for you to examine yourself to see if there's any offense found in you. If you find sin hiding, repent. In the words of King David, ask the Father to create in you a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Some Israelites spend the entire awakening looking for faults in other Israelites and the Gentiles. In the meantime, the prophecies spoken by our fathers concerning their tribes are coming to pass. The beam in the eyes of some Israelites have blinded them. Israelites, the Most High allow his people to fall into a deep sleep to allow the Gentiles that are predestined to obtain salvation to enter. Some Israelites despise hearing that some Gentiles have an opportunity to be saved. The reason you're angry, the Most High have hardened his people's heart, just as he did with Pharaoh, to allow the Gentiles to enter, all the Gentiles that are called by his name. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Israelites, the awakening is giving our people the opportunity to repent and to get to know the God of our fathers. Believe it or not, majority of Israelites in the awakening don't know the God of Israel. They know the God of this world. Israelites, utilize the time the Most High has given to you wisely. The Gentiles that are cleaving to us know that when our redemption come, the time of the Gentiles are over. Israelites, don't allow the Satans to influence you to continue to sin when you should be repenting and returning to the Father. Time is of the essence. Take advantage of the little time we have left before it's too late. No matter how righteous you may believe you are, no matter how much word you believe you know, no matter how wise you believe you've become, the Most High called for his people to humble themselves. Israelites, the Most High awaken you out of your slumber to save your life. Do not become a part of the population of Israelites and Gentiles under a strong delusion. Repent, for the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting.